very large Z uh, compared to R0. Oh, by the way, I used R for the disk. It's R0. So this is the electric field along at the distance Z uh, on the axis of a uh, disk whose radius is R0, right? And uniform surface charge density. Um, yeah, so those two limiting cases are for um, uh, at, at very small and very large Z, yeah? Now, if, if Z goes to infinity, Uh, now, this is a relatively simple case, except, uh, you know, if you try to figure it out, you're going to get infinity minus infinity, uh, and uh, that's one form of L hospitals, yeah? Right, so you could do that. Uh, uh, so we could do that, and... Uh, uh, or we could do a, uh, a series approximation, right? Uh, so l let me show you what happens at, at, at very infinite Z. So if Z goes to infinity, meaning Z is a lot larger than R0, right? That just means that uh, R0 over Z is a lot less than one. And let's take a look at this term and see what happens to this term in the electric field when the ratio is so insignificant. Yeah, so let's take a look at this term. So this is R0 plus Z squared squared to the half. Yeah, take it up. I'm going to do a binomial series expansion on it. So z squared to the minus half. Uh, I need to get r0 over z, so I will factor out the z square. So I will get 1 plus r0 over squared over z squared to the minus half. And now I could do binomial series expansion with k equal minus one half, remember what I showed you a minute ago, and x is r0 over squared over z squared. So if you do the binomial series expansion on this, you will get, oh, by the way, this is also raised to the minus one half here. So you get one over z, right? It's open bracket. So this is one minus one half r, 0 squared over z squared. Uh, it's, k, it's 1 plus kx plus k times k minus 1. So minus half times minus half minus 1, which is minus 3 halves. So this becomes minus half times minus 3 halves. Right? x squared, so r0 squared over z squared squared times 1 over 2 factorial plus higher order terms. But these higher order terms can safely be ignored because we said that R0 over Z is a lot less than 1, which makes these guys extremely small. Okay, so now that I did a binomial series expansion, I will take this and I will plug it into the electric field equation. And so I will get for the disk, Right, E for the disk. So this is the limiting case when Z is a lot bigger than R or Z goes to infinity. So I will get sigma Z over 2 epsilon, 1 over Z minus what I've got here. So now I'm going to put this thing here. So FOIL, so minus 1 over Z, yeah, because, so it's minus, so you flip the signs, so plus 1 half R0 squared over Z cube. right? And you can see that those two go away. 
and we get uh, one one z cancels one z so we get sigma over two epsilon times one half r zero squared over z squared so we get sigma r zero squared over four sigma z squared so at very large z uh, you, right, you get sigma r0 squared over 4 epsilon z squared for the electric field of a disk, right? But we said, uh, so, it, it, so it, it does, it still vanishes, but now we are being a little bit more specific. It vanishes as 1 over z squared because z squared is a lot bigger than r0 squared. So this guy will go to 0. At very large depth. Right? Um, yeah, well, it would, yeah, I guess. Although, wouldn't it basically, wouldn't we also be able to? I would have thought it would be able to. Uh, Charge density over r squared. I mean over z uh, z squared. But oh wait, uh, hold on a second. Charge. Uh, did I? No, no, I did it correctly because uh, the one over z foils on that. Yeah, yeah, it drops as one over z squared. Yeah, it would become like a point charge. Yeah, so now this is the limiting case for very large z. What about very small z? Let's take a look at very small z. What happens at very small z? So this is the electric field of a disk at very small z. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so at very small z, that means R0 is a lot bigger than z which means z over r0 is a lot less than 1 now, yeah? So now let's do the approximation on that. So I will do the same thing, except I will reverse the role of the r0 and the z in the expansion, right? So, so let's take a look. So 1 over r0 squared plus z squared to the half. This becomes r0 squared plus z squared to the minus half. Again, use the same thing, except now you'd want z over r0 for your series. So factor out uh, r0 squared. So you'd get 1 plus z squared over r0 squared. And this here is raised to the minus 1 half, and this is raised to the minus 1 half. So again, I will apply the binomial series expansion on this guy with k equals minus 1 half. So I will get 1 over r0, because, you know, 2 to the minus half. And I'm duplicating my work on the previous uh, question. Yeah, previous part, it's sort of similar now. So uh, one plus or minus half. Z squared over R zero squared plus minus half times minus three halves times one over two factorial Z squared over r0 squared squared plus higher order terms which we can safely ignore because z over r0 is a lot less than one this also goes to zero and so i will get one over r0 minus one half z squared over r0 cube okay now take this and plug it back 
into the electric field of the disk, the original one that we've calculated in the previous question, this equation here, let's call it one. So plug in one. Yeah. So e so after so plug in one. Plug in one. So now the electric field for the disk becomes uh, sigma z over two epsilon. I think the first term was one over z, if I'm not mistaken, minus what we've got here, minus one over r zero plus one half z squared over r zero cube. Right, but look, the uh, Z is very small compared to R, so I can safely ignore this term here. Yeah? So now, if I FOIL this, I will get sigma over 2 epsilon minus sigma over 2 epsilon Z over R0. Uh, bingo. Again, this guy is zero because Z is too small, or you could ignore. Right? And what do you get? You get E for this as Z goes to zero. That means you're so close to the disk, you're almost on the surface of the disk, equaling sigma over two epsilon. So it's actually fascinating that it's almost independent of the distance when you make that approximation. In fact, uh, in fact, this is the electric field. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, at at a distance uh, of an infinite plane of charge. So if you're so close to the disk, um, you, you're very close, the, the, the disk, it, it's as if you're at a distance, uh, any distance away from an infinite sheet of charge, you get the same electric field. All right? And if you're so far away, uh, if you're so far away and you are willing to ignore the term R0 squared over Z squared, then the electric field goes to zero. Well, shouldn't it be able to be like uh, one over R squared or one over Z squared? Uh, in which case? When uh, Z is much larger than R, shouldn't it approach a uh, point, uh, a, the equation for a point charge? When, uh, you said when, uh, uh, when Z is very small? No, when Z is very large, far away. Uh, it would approach zero eventually, but would it, wouldn't it approach the uh, like the function? Wouldn't it approach the function for a point charge? Um, uh, no, because if 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 you see if. If you if Z is very small, the electric field becomes like that of a plane. But if yeah, if it's very large, if it's very large, 
and you're willing to ignore the r0 squared over z squared, then you can maybe say it goes to zero, but essentially, actually, let me, let me, show, you an, let me show you an interesting result. So for the, uh, for, for the case when z is very large, we got the e for the disk to be when z goes to infinity, or in other words, z is a lot larger than r, we got the e to be, uh, uh, what was it, sigma r0 squared, sigma r0 squared over 4 epsilon z squared, right? That's, isn't that what we got? Yeah, that's what we got, yeah? Now, the, the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, well, uh, what is sigma? Uh, right, sigma is the charge density. So sigma is just Q over pi R squared because you know the the area of it's it's q over a and the area of the disk is just pi r squared uniformly distributed so if i plug this in i will get uh and this is r0 squared pi r0 squared so i will get uh q over for sigma pi r0 squared right times r0 squared over 4 epsilon z squared. And look what happens. This goes away. Bingo. And I get q over 4 pi epsilon z squared. There we go. What's this? This is the electric field of a point charge when you're so very far away from the disk. The entire charge on the disk seems as if it was a point charge away. And the electric field is that of the electric field of a point charge at very large distance away. It just, you know, comes down to an electric field of a point charge. So th these are the kind of delimiting cases is if, if you're so close, you get the electric field of an infinite sheet or a plane, and if you're so very far, you get the electric field of a point charge. So the entire surface, the entire disk, looks as if it was, seems to be a point charge. Looks like a point.